I was the third round of auditions in real life in real time. So it was a long day. So if I would have waited any longer, y'all probably wouldn't even see me on the show. All right, thank you, Two Live Bree, for coming on to the podcast. Two Live Bree! I ain't got the time for no petty shit. Yo, she be popping pills, it ain't her medicine. Oh, yes, I was gone, now I'm back again. Got a foreign hoe, and yes, she from Pakistan. Yeah, everything on go like a GoPro. This is the first guest I've actually had on the podcast. All the other episodes have just been me. So, um... And super exciting, and uh, yeah, I was thinking we would just get right into the questions, so I found out about you from Rhythm and Flow, uh, people might have found you out from other plays, but just a general question, just what was it like being on a huge Netflix show like that and seeing huge music names like Cardi B and Chance the Rapper? And it was a crazy feeling for me. What I can say, being on that show at that time felt like a movie. It felt unreal, simply because being an inspiring artist and an artist that's just been grinding from day one since 13 years old and you in front of your idols or in front of your peers in the hip-hop industry, you like, wow, I'm actually somewhere that I never thought I would be. Like, you always dreamed it but you never really thought it. So it just hit me at like all at once when I was there. And I was like, this is crazy, you know? <laughs> so yeah, it was a crazy experience. Yeah. So I think you mentioned in there you started at 13, but when did you kind of realize with the rap and like, oh, I'm good at this, or like, oh, I could do this like as a job? Man, honestly, it came at me. I never really made it a job in a way like, I... Uh, when I was 13, 14, 15, 16, even 17, I was performing everywhere from every party that was done in high school, middle school. Um, I was getting booked. I was popping up doing Sweet 16s, making kids cry that's the same age as me. And it really never became a job. It just felt like I was spreading love from the beginning. So when I realized my impact, that's when I kind of tapped into understanding, okay, this is what I need to do. This is what I need to do as far as, you know, an artist. Mm -hmm. uh, so what's one thing you wish you had known when you started your career, started playing shows or making music? Man, uh, don't worry about the external, you know, noise. That's for anybody that's a creative or anybody that's got dreams. Don't worry about the, you know, the awards, just do it because you love it. Because when you get caught up into that stuff, you forget the joy and the happiness of it. And you, you will never, what can I say? You'll never please everyone. You're only yeah. going to be able to please yourself. And the impossible people that you to make love. everyone happy, you're saying? Yeah, it's impossible to do that. So don't ever worry about what people think. It's all about how you feel. Uh, who has inspired you the most in life or like what artists do you take inspiration from the most for me it is Jay-Z Kanye West and Nipsey Hussle them are my biggest influential figures uh, for me and every step I make in this hip hop game them are my top three mm -hmm. alright and so Rhythm and Flow obviously got pretty big on Netflix and I'm sure that helped your following quite a bit like how did you deal with such a big jump in your following or so many more people now listening to your music following what you do um I mean it can't it didn't really change for me in a way like definitely it helped in a um point of view of just finding new fans and gaining new fans but as far as my motive of why I do things or how I do things or operate. It didn't change anything simply because, like, I, I never become, I, like, I'm never the artist that think too hard about um, the fans. I never change up anything. So the fans, I hope they know who I am. <laughs> and, like, just be like, yo, you know, welcome on the board of, you know, this two-live wave, you know. So, yeah. Mm. 
Um, so on Rhythm and Flow, I watched like the show. Before shows, it seemed like there was kind of like a big waiting room or like room with all the artists. What was it like just being surrounded by so many artists? And who do you think you connected with or had the best chemistry with? Um, man, I wish y'all got to see the other dope artists that was on the show that didn't make the cut and um, some of them that didn't even get the audition. Um, it just showed me that we all the superheroes around the world as creatives because we all got our own following back at home. We all got our unique things about us that make us an artist that somebody can listen to. You know, um, every artist isn't for everyone. You know, just like, you know, you only listen to certain artists in your day. Other people only listen to certain artists in their day. So it woke me up in that way to realize that it's a blessing to be here <laughs> and yeah. make it through. Um, but um, London, you know, that's somebody I was vibing with on the real auditions, the online auditions. I mean, not online auditions. We did a face-to-face -face audition before our, what's the call auditions that she was on, the people that got casted with me. We was actually in the same room, and we yeah. manifested that we was going to be on the show together. Uh, we connected instantly. Um, I know people rarely would know that, you know, from watching the show. But, um, no, that's somebody I still connect yeah, with I'm outside. Sure. They, it's a it's a good show, but I'm sure there's a lot that they couldn't put in or cut out. Oh, uh, definitely, definitely. Definitely, definitely. It was, I was filming this in 2018. They scouted me 2019. They filmed it 2020. It was last year? I don't know when they dropped it. But it, it was like, I think it was the three worst period of time. So, you know, it was a lot they put into it, and I, I'm happy with it. Yeah. Um, so your first performance on the show, your audition, was in front of T.I., Quavo, and Big Boy. What kind of was it like performing in front of big names? You kind of mentioned it earlier with it not feeling real, but you get up on the stage and the three of them are just sitting there like waiting for you to perform. Yeah. What was that like? Man, it was crazy. Um, T.I. for sure and um, Big Boy, I look up to them a lot. Quavo, I performed with him before, so it was like kind of refreshing to be judged by him versus performing with him you know what i'm saying so i was just i knew i had something to prove that night simply because it was about okay i'm here i got you know my fans on my back that already support me and then on top of that i got my city you know watching i'm representing but um so i definitely wanted to represent let people know nashville as hip-hop um but yeah man like i remember that feeling and i was just like i gotta go eat that's why you see in my face in that episode, it was just, I was very focused. You know, I ain't gonna cap, but I took a shot of Crown, <laughs> and I was like, man, it's time to go. But right before I hit the stage, and it was, it was dope. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so after that audition, T.I. gives you, like, all his criticisms, but then eventually tells you that you're going on to the next round. I'm gonna go send you on to the next round. I appreciate that, man. You're the king of the South. I got you. How did that feel, or what went through your head when he was saying that? I actually knew on stage I was going to get passed through. I honestly blacked out when he was talking to me in real life. Uh -huh. Like, because I was just in my zone. I was in my own world. I didn't you care. You knew he was you know, talking, like, but you weren't really listening to what he yeah. was saying. Yeah, I like, bro, this is dope. This is too much. This, yeah, we here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, it was, uh, yeah, I remember everything. But it was a bigger dialogue. Um, Big Boy gave me a lot of love that day. I remember Quavo was like, this is the hyper performance I seen all day. I needed this. And I like, bet I got you. You know what I'm saying? Because um, that day I was the third round of auditions in real life, in real time. So it was a long day. So if I would have waited any longer, y'all probably wouldn't even see me on the show. Mm -hmm. um, so on the show, they kind of had that quick like talking head of you and you said that you wanted to make sure Nashville, Tennessee wasn't misconstrued as like, oh, we got country music. You wanted to show that they had hip hop and everything else. Do you think you're on a good path to be doing that? And do you think you're getting that message out well? 100%. And I think the creators in Nashville is doing the same thing. Uh, we tapped into some Super Bowl commercial placements this year um, with Pepsi and, uh, you know, I think T Mobile. But like, Nashville hip hop is on the rise. And if you're not paying attention, you're going to miss it. <laughs> Mm -hmm. so I'm sure it took longer in real time than in the show but 
uh, I think like the next episode or a couple episodes later, you're in LA in this big kind of warehouse, and it's the three like main judges, Cardi, Chance, and Ti, and they tell you that the winner is gonna get two hundred fifty thousand dollars and perform on Rap Caviar Live. What was your reaction when you went through that, or what was your thinking when you heard that? Man, I had anxiety like a mud. I ain't gonna cap. <laughs> uh, just being in that moment, it was just like, oh, this is unreal. Like, I had so many bad thoughts. Man, this is cap. This is just, they finna spoof us. This is not even about a rap show. Why do I deserve to be here? Like, I, and that was a time I didn't have therapy or anything like that. I was more in a mindset of like, bruh, thinking negative about everything. So, I really didn't appreciate the moment when I was there because I had a lot of weight on my shoulder um, that I now realized at that time. Yeah, I'm sure it can be pressure in the show. You got had like 24 hours before rounds, I'm sure. 100%. I'm sure it was very fast, yeah. Um, so for the Cypher round, it was you, Beans, Inglewood IV, and Big Mouth Bo. What was the vibe, the chemistry, like the feeling in that group leading up to the performance of the Cypher? It was crazy. Real life, we was the first performance <laughs> of the day. So I was the first person that performed. So I was yeah. nervous as Like, I didn't really, honestly, I didn't want to be first because I felt like I had to set the tone, which I set the tone in Atlanta, which I know that's why the producers and everybody were like, man, we're going to get this group first. I'm pretty going to go first. And everybody was like, mm, I'm talking about the entire So. The, everybody that was cast, directors, everybody was coming up to me, bring you, you topping it off, you, you're taking it off, you're starting to sew, and it was a lot of pressure on me, and they wasn't realizing my mental space at that time. Um, I didn't even realize my mental space, so I had a lot of anxiety. Um, we got to practice the sayings before, um, and I did good in practice. I just wasn't prepared all the way in the tip of my performance. My bars, they, you know, it was ready, but Performance-wise, I couldn't act out anything because I was so anxiety yeah. up. Yeah, well, you were doing well, and towards the end, there was, like, a small, like, tiny section where you seemed to forget a word or two. Rock the only time that I would rock and roll. They watch for entertainment, I guess. They take the Super Bowl. She hands off. Shawty, she a give and go. But how did you handle that, and did you... Did you take it as motivation to like finish off strong, or did you kind of get in your head more and get more anxiety or more pressure? Ooh, got in my head a little more, a little more anxiety <laughs> because it's like, dang, I'm the first person. They don't want me to mess up. Nobody wants me to mess up. My team, I'm thinking about everybody because I'm motivating the group in real life. So it's like, dang, they like, man, if we messed up, we going to mess up, and I don't want to be that reason why, you know, but... um. It's yeah. just the domino effect. Your domino God kind effect. of affects everyone yep, everything, else coming Everything, the tempo, yeah. the whole day, you know, so, yeah. All right, um, so at the end of the show, uh, spoiler alert for anyone who hasn't seen it, but you probably should have seen it by now, uh, D Smoke ended up winning the show, winning the competition. It's going to go to D Smoke. <laughs> Did you think D Smoke was the right choice to win, or do you, was there someone else that you thought should have won instead of him? Everybody knows I was rooting for London B. You know what I'm saying? So that's who I thought should have won the show, and I still like D Smoke. I think D Smoke was definitely hard and dope. Mm -hmm. I think everybody in the show should have won, but I was rooting for yeah. London B. <laughs> what was, um, for London B, what was your like favorite performance of her? Like the music video, the finale. Like what? What was your favorite? performance of bars that she finale, had. I think the finale, man, she showed out. Even her messing up, it just made the role so, so real. You know mm. what I'm saying? Like, it wasn't fake. You it know was what I'm saying? Like transparent and, like, Yeah, being London honest, was not like, capped. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, London deserved to win because that's what the world is about. It's about making mistakes and pushing through. And it's about, you know, somebody that can speak to the world. And she was a female artist at the time where, you know, we didn't have so... We still don't have so many female artists that's rapping like London B, period. So, like, yeah, that's how I feel about that. I'm still passionate about London being on top. I still think she's probably one of the hardest. Mm -hmm. um, so, upcoming project, you gave me kind of a few snippets, snippets of it. Uh, super good, really, really good music. I enjoyed it a lot. Um, when is it coming out? What are you trying to say with the album? Like, what's is there a message behind the album, what are you trying to present it's to the called, world? 
the album is called Butterfly Effect. It's trying to show people how to be a butterfly in a way of explaining that it is just being free, you know, and understanding life is about you unfolding by each chance. And if you watch me, you're going to see me unfold um, every step that you see me take. So it's called Butterfly Effect. Um, for anybody that's going through depression, sadness, mental illnesses, anything like that, I think this is going to resonate to you. So, mm -hmm. yeah, man. Right. And uh, when's that coming out? March. March. It comes out in March, man, so be looking forward. All right, yeah, I'll definitely <laughs> stay tuned. Um, thank you so much for coming on. It's been amazing. It's kind of like when you performed, it's not even real that you're actually here doing a podcast with me. But um, where can yeah. people find you? Social media, music, anything you do, where can they find you online? At Two Library, everywhere. Keep grinding with this man. You're the man. Hey, I support you. I believe in you. Keep me updated on your career, bro. I'll be looking for you. Uh, and shoot, when you drop this, share it to me so I can share it too. So it's love. Yeah, definitely. All right. Thank you so much, Rick. Peace. Yeah, water gon' ball. Yeah, yeah. Big coupe, Megazord. Yeah, yeah. Playing paddock is aluminum four. Yeah, yeah.